Bridge Tech's Most Common Service Questions. Thank you for choosing Ridge Tech. Just like with many other electronics, you may have questions about your Ridge Tech camera and need some helpful advice. Well, you've come to the right video. We'll be discussing some of our most common service questions here. If there are any questions you have that aren't in this video or aren't covered by our official tutorials, leave us a comment below and we'll make sure it makes it into a future video. We plan on making a number of these over time as we can't possibly cover them all in one video. Now, let's get started. Why has my camera stopped sending photos? There are many different reasons this could be the case, so we'll go over as many as we can here. Maybe you rely on getting notifications in your email and stopped receiving emails. While we have this option available, different email providers function differently. After so many come through, your email provider may have decided that notifications from RidgeTech are spam, or maybe they've been redirected into a secondary inbox folder. Because of this, email isn't the most reliable way to receive our notifications. You'll have a better experience if you download the mobile app and enable push notifications. Or you could always just check the portal gallery to make sure your images are coming through. Your pull points or SIM card could be suspended. If this is the case, use the Renew Pool button on the My Pool tab of the My Account page and check out on the cart screen. You'll need to have already input credit card information in the Billing tab in order to check out. This will renew your pool and reactivate your SIM card if Auto Activate is checked. You may also want to check your active SIMs at the bottom of the My Pool tab and make sure the one you want to use is set to Auto Activate. If you end up swapping SIM cards, make sure to power cycle the camera and perform the steps in the Camera Diagnostic Steps video available on our channel. You could be having a battery issue. Ultimate lithium AA batteries hold a full charge for most of their life and then drop off. So if you're using these, you'll want to change them once they get down to around 75% or below. Depending on when your camera will next contact the server, this may be the last battery reading you get before they die. If AA batteries seem to be an inconvenience, we have options for AC and solar power available in our online store. Maybe you don't have enough signal for uploads to occur. Our Lookout Dual cameras in the U.S. come with AT&T and Verizon SIM cards. AT&T will switch to 3G when the signal is too low for 4G and will be unable to make uploads with a signal strength of around 15% or less. However, Verizon no longer supports 3G, so when your signal using Verizon gets down to around 50% or less, your camera will generally be unable to send uploads. Use this knowledge to scout for a better location to deploy your camera. You can also purchase a booster antenna from our online store to better your signal, as well as improve battery life and overall reliability. If your camera is sending a heartbeat but no photos, and isn't having signal or battery issues, this likely means there's a problem with your SD card. Make sure you haven't locked the card with the tiny lock switch on the side, and if that isn't the issue, replace the card and try again. Perform our recommended camera diagnostics and perform a manual upload. If there are still SD card problems, you'll see an error message on the LCD screen now. Make sure you're using a quality SD card. We offer a Class 10 card in our online store. There's always a chance that lesser known brands could cause problems. Also remember that SD cards deteriorate over time as they have a limited number of data writes. Another reason you aren't getting any activity is that you may have duty time enabled with all days and hours unchecked. You'll want to disable duty time or check which hours of each day you'll want your camera active to fix this. I activated my Verizon SIM, but why won't my camera go online? As stated a bit earlier, if your Verizon signal is around 50% or below, you won't have the signal strength you need to send files. Try the AT&T card that came with your Lookout Dual, as it can work on 3G while Verizon can't, as well as operate down to around 15% signal strength. Make sure to perform camera diagnostics upon switching SIMs. We can't definitively say that one carrier is better than the other. The best carrier is the one that gives you the best service in your given location, and that may not always be the one you expect it to be. I purchased a booster antenna. Why is there no signal? Or, why is my signal no better than before? First, make sure the booster antenna cable is plugged into the port on the left or hinge side while facing the front of your camera as this is your primary antenna port. If you're using the Yegi directional antenna, verify that you've located the closest cell tower and are pointing the antenna in that direction. 
If you're not sure where the closest tower is, watch the signal number as you adjust the direction of your antenna, giving it a few seconds to refresh with each adjustment until you get what you need. Also, make sure one of your original antennas is attached to the port on the right side of the camera. My camera is on, but why does it keep beeping? Power cycle your camera by turning it off and switching to set. You may have forgotten to insert your SD card, or your SIM may have an issue. If this is the case, you'll see an error message on the LCD screen. Try another SD card or SIM card, power cycle, and try again. My camera is on, but why won't the blue light stop flashing? Do not leave your camera in this state. Keep in mind that in areas where the signal may not be as strong, the blue light can flash for up to two minutes before your camera connects to the network. If the light takes longer than two minutes to stop flashing, power off the camera and switch to set, and then perform recommended camera diagnostics. If there is still an issue, you may not have enough signal for your camera to operate. Try both SIM cards, a booster antenna, or moving to another location. Anytime you deploy, make sure the blue light stops flashing before you leave. I just returned from mounting my camera several hours away. Why am I not getting any photos? When your camera is turned on, if there's enough signal, it will download settings, snap and upload a photo, and then enter sleep mode until it wakes up again. The blue light will flash throughout this process and stop once the camera is asleep. Check to make sure you got the photo, and if you did not, perform diagnostic steps, including manually snapping and uploading a photo. You may also want to do some walk tests by walking in front of and triggering your camera. You'll get photos of this quickly with instant mode on. Remember that if you have schedule mode on, it may be a while before you get any uploads. You might also have duty time enabled with certain hours of the day turned off. It's a good idea to have instant mode on when deploying your camera, so you can do a walk test and then change any settings you need to before leaving your camera. Why am I getting so many photos? Your camera can be triggered by motion and by a time lapse setting. Check time lapse to see if it's enabled and what it's set for to make sure this isn't the problem. If you're getting too many motion triggers, there are a few things you can try. Increase quiet time to have the camera rest longer in between events. Alter your mounting strategy, as your camera may not be completely secure, so it could be moved around by wind or other forces. Or clear any weeds, brush, or limbs directly in front of the camera that move easily in the wind. In general, the sensing zone is the lower half of the image. If loose limbs and brush are in the way, try aiming your camera lower by tilting it forward. RidgeTech has specially designed our Fresnel lens and PIR sensor with a partner in Germany to include sneak-by protection. This means that when mounted higher up, the camera can still detect motion at a steep angle below the camera, so sometimes what triggered your camera could be hidden by the info strip or located just below the image. If this is a constant problem, lower your camera 3 to 4 feet and aim it horizontally. Our lookout cameras also contain a PIR sensitivity switch, which is located underneath the power switch on the inside of the camera. It has low, mid, and high settings, so feel free to lower the camera's PIR sensitivity if you're getting too many motion triggers and are having difficulty figuring out what triggered your camera. My camera's in video mode, so why won't my videos play when I click on them? When triggered in video mode, your camera will record a video and then send the first frame to the portal as a thumbnail. This thumbnail has a green play button in the top right corner to distinguish it from a photo mode thumbnail. The purpose of this thumbnail is to allow you to see what triggered the camera without spending points on several videos you may not need. To view your videos, click the wrench at the top of the gallery to open management mode, click the action button, and then request video. You can refresh and monitor the actions tab to see the request status, and then view the video in the gallery by clicking the thumbnail after it's had a white play button placed over top of it. You're also able to retrieve the SD card from your camera and view any videos on your PC without spending extra pool points. How long does it take for requested videos to upload? This depends on when your camera will next contact the server to send heartbeat info or upload files. If your heartbeat intervals are set far apart, or you're running in schedule mode with longer time intervals, this could take a while. In instant mode, you'll get it after the next time your camera wakes up to capture something. You can check the status of your request in the Actions tab and even cancel it if you need to. 
Once again, you can also view the files from your SD card on your PC. How do the pool and rate tiers work? We have a video specifically for this on our channel called Monthly Billing in the Pool. You'll get more out of watching that video than if we were to try and compress that information into a paragraph or two here. I have points in my points reserve, but my pool is suspended. Why? Your points reserve is only used when your account, and therefore your pool, is active. These aren't a substitute for pool points. They're only used when your points run out before your next billing cycle. You can renew your pool on the My Pool tab of the My Account page, and will need to do this if your pool is suspended. Also, you can check the status of your SIM card at the bottom of the My Pool tab to make sure it's active. I bought the 5,000 photos plan, but all my points are gone, and I know I don't have 5,000 photos. Why? The pricing page provides a photo count at each tier based on specific settings. If you want to get 5,000 photos out of the 5,000 points tier, you'll need to run your camera with low resolution and low quality settings. Increasing quality will increase the cost, so if you use high quality, which uses 4 points, you'll get 1,250 photos with 5,000 points. You can budget your points in various ways, by lowering quality settings, increasing quiet time, viewing original files on your SD card with your PC, employing duty time to disable your camera during certain hours, and so on. Should I use internal AA batteries while also using AC or solar power? No. We recommend leaving these out while using external power. Over time, the batteries will drain, wasting your money. Lithium batteries can also create a rare situation where the camera's auto-sensing is hung on using internal power over external due to voltage. This is also true for many other trail cameras with auto-sensing. If you feel you need a power boost, we recommend using rechargeable batteries. You can even just use six at a time, either all in the top row or all in the bottom. We do not recommend using alkaline batteries, as they can expand and leak over time. The chemicals and gases inside alkaline batteries can be a danger to the camera's internal electronics, and you certainly don't want to damage those. My camera stopped sending photos, but the overview tab says my battery is at 75%. Why? We touched on this at the very beginning, but this is an important issue, so here we are full circle. If you're using lithium AA batteries, this may happen to you, because lithiums hold their charge until their final moments. Your camera likely didn't have enough power left to communicate once more after sending that 75% battery status, so this would have been the final reading you received. You'll want to keep a close eye on your battery life while using lithium batteries, and change them when your battery reading begins to drop. If you're concerned with any negative side effects of using AA batteries, we have external power options available in our online store. How do I download my thumbnails, photos, or videos to my phone through the mobile app? There are two ways to do this. In the gallery, with your grid of thumbnails displayed, rotate your phone 90 degrees to landscape mode, to where it's long ways or like a widescreen TV. A green download button will appear over the thumbnails. Tapping this will download the file to your device, and you'll get notifications for both the file downloading and when it's complete. Alternatively, you can tap on an image to open your file in the light box, and use the green download button there, which will function the same way. That's about all we have for this video about common service questions. We'll be back with more in the future. Thanks for watching. For more information, please visit us online or contact us via the methods shown on screen.